also have this video access for us. We're good to go, Daniel? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for making that happen. I think All right. Out. So let's start off with a very basic problem. We're going to do um, 2x squared plus uh, 40x minus 16 is equal to 0. So this is the problem that we're working with, okay? This one's going to work out to be relatively okay. So just trust me as we go along. What's the very first thing that I need to do? What's the very first thing? Divide everything by two. Divide everything by two. Where did that two come from? The x squared. Under the x. All right. So whatever number's in front of you, we're going to divide everything by that. If it's a one, it's kind of already done. I don't have to do anything, right? Okay. So we're going to divide everything by two. All of this side gets divided by two. All of this side gets divided by two. And if that one's a zero, which it doesn't have to be, but if it's a zero, and it'll usually be a zero, you're making funny faces behind my back in the video, because that would be kind of funny, but also kind of upsetting. Zero divided by two is going to be zero. If it's not zero, then it's not going to be zero, but that's okay. Over here, everything gets divided by zero. And luckily, in this case, two divided by two is one. I just get x squared. Four divided by two 20. is just 20, 20x. And 16 divided by two is a negative eight. Luckily for us, in this case, we don't go into fractions, but we could. And we could go into fractions that are like 0.5, and we could go into fractions that are like 0.2185, you know, it could be whatever. Uh, honestly, we could do any of these, and it doesn't get more difficult, it just takes longer to write. Because a decimal number is just like a regular other number, it just takes longer to write. So now, we've got uh, something that's a little simpler in format. Now, this graph is different if this were like y equals. But if it's just as equal to zero if we're just solving for x, then it's the exact same thing. Because I'm allowed to do anything I want as long as I do the same thing to both sides. And I want, in this case, to divide by two, so I can do that. Any questions before we go on? Cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this guy uh, over here. Add. So add. somebody said, hey, we're gonna add eight to both sides, right? Yeah. I'll just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna say plus eight, plus eight, wonderful. So now this cancels out, it goes down to zero. I'm not gonna write zero though, and you'll see why in just a second. I got x squared plus 20x, I'll just leave a little bit of space here. And zero plus eight is eight. Are we okay with that so far? Mm -hmm. Aren't you, aren't you supposed to have to square? Say it one more time. Yeah. Are you to we're, we're almost there, like it's, it's hiding in the back, but it's not ready to come out yet. All right, it's, it's lurking in the shadows. All right, so now, <laughs> The next thing that I got, uh, are you a puppeting family? No. <laughs> no, I'm Why is she here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> she's making she nervous. Yeah. What, what she was I like, supposed to do with she's she's like, like, she's she's like, 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 I'm going to take half of some like number, half. I'm going to square that it's number. What number am I working with here? Uh, 10. <laughs> oh, well, 20. Well, so then you, half of that you, is You 10. got it, and you're ahead of me, which is cool. 10 so he said, hey, let's take 20, positive 20, because it's positive here. We'll take 20. We take half of it, so we're at 10. And then we're going to square that number, right? That's the one that we're squaring. So 10 squared is? Uh, 100. 100, cool. All right, so now I'm thinking of 100. I got 100. What do I do with 100? Uh, yeah, add to both sides. I can do anything I want as long as I do the same thing to both sides. So that means that I can add 100 to both sides as long as I do it to both. That's, that's fine. So I just did that. Yay! Wait, why did we add 100? Why did we add 100 again? We took 20. We took half of it, which was 10, and then we squared that number. 10 times 10 will give me 100. This number that I'm adding here to both sides will always be positive. And it's always positive because I just squared it. So if it was negative, negative times negative is positive. If it was positive, positive times positive is positive. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. It's always going to work out. Unless no. unless we're doing complex numbers. But it would still work, but not in this case. So we're looking for real solutions. Yeah, real solutions. On this side, I've got 8 plus 100, which is? 108. 108, wonderful. And on this side, oh! This is that squared that was lurking there the whole time. It's something squared, and I know it's something squared because we just turned it into that, okay? That's why we picked this number. We took half of this one and squared it because that turns this into x plus 10. X plus 10. And this number that I'm thinking is half of this number. This number is half of this number. So now I've got x plus 10. Also, worth mentioning, if this were negative, then this one would be negative. Got a match. Uh, you repeat what? 
Okay, so you said like the reason why it's yes. just x plus n because apparently it's half of twenty as well. It's pretty much. Yep. And here, I, I, I'm going to work backwards to get here. If I did x plus ten squared, that's going to be x plus ten times x plus ten. I'm going to foil this out. So that's first outside, inside, last. I get x squared plus ten x plus another ten x plus a hundred. Those make twenty x. And if you'll notice, x squared plus 20x plus 100 is x squared plus 20x plus 100. It's the exact same thing we have. <laughs> 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 Ten points. It's a good thing it wasn't some of that other stuff. All right, so now I'm here. And we are now faced with a problem like we were just working on where I'm saying, hey, this thing squared is this number. And that leads me to believe that there are two possible answers. One of them is positive, one of them is negative, right? Because the positive number times itself is, that, that's great. And the negative times itself comes out to also be that number. So now I'm going to say that x plus 10, I'm essentially taking the square root of both sides. It's the square root of 108, but there's two potential answers. There's the positive version and the negative version. So that's where I get that plus or minus 108. And then as a question for you, the square root of 108, is that a nice, easy number that I should have filed away? Yes. No. Some people say yes, some people say no. What is 10 squared? 100. What's 11 squared? 121. So it's between 100 and 121, which means the answer is going to be between 10 and 11. And it's just 10 points stuff. <laughs> So this is 10 point stuff, but it's not going to work out nicely. So we don't have to go any further with that. Let's just leave it there. We could maybe reduce it, but that's about it. How would you get it to like work out nicely? How would I get it to work out nicely? Let's just say, hey, uh, what if the problem were the square root of 25? And you'd be like, oh, hey, cool, that's five, right? Sometimes it will work out nicely. And so whenever we're looking at plus or minus the square root of 25, you'd have plus or minus 5. And if you wanted to later on, you could do two different problems. Let's do the plus and let's do the minus. But we can stretch it out from there. But this case, it doesn't. This one is just 10 point. And it goes on literally forever. It never stops. It's a decimal number. It goes forever. So our final answer would pretty much be x equals negative 10 plus or minus uh, the square root of 108. How'd you get that? How'd you go from here to what you said? Uh, well, you said, you told us before, we had to like, pretty much like put it at both sides, negative 10, because there's a positive 10, all right? And, we try, and we're trying to get x by itself. So, our, yeah, so in the end, it would have to be negative 10 plus, plus or minus uh, 108. Yeah, because we've got x minus 10. I only want x, so I'm just going to subtract 10 from this side. I'll subtract 10 over here. I'll do a little switcheroo, and it's still okay. So x is equal to negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 108. And that is the number we're looking for. We just completed the square, and we worked it all the way to the absolute end of the problem. Do you have any questions? Uh, yes. Yep. I know I keep asking questions, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. So you explained to us backwards on how we on how x to plus ten to the second power would pretty much equal into you know the an the answer from above. Yep. Oh. But how, like, but you could could you because you here to here. Yeah, here, yeah, here. Sure. Uh, okay, I've got x squared plus 20x is equal to 100. I'm trying, what do you mean? No, 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 that's wrong. Plus 100 is equal to 0. I would love to have stuff times stuff is equal to 0. Okay. That'd be nice, because there's this thing called the zero product property. Zero, you know. Product means the answer to a multiplication problem, right? Okay. So the zero product property says if I have a thing times a thing is equal to 0, then either this one is 0, or this one is zero, or maybe they're both zero. But I can't have something that's not zero times something that's not zero equals zero. So give me two numbers that aren't zero that you multiply one together to be zero. One oh, times wait, two? No, nope, no. that's not uh, zero. How about ten? Let's one and zero. Oh, wait, uh, zero. Let's see. 50 and 25. Five and four. 25, multiply them together, still not zero. Five and four, you multiply them together, still not zero. Uh, so what I'm saying is if you have two numbers and you multiply them together and the answer is zero, I know I can backtrack one or both of those have to be zero. Otherwise, you did something wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. Otherwise, you had some magic, you, some magic uh, multiplication that you used. So if I could go from here to here, that would be awesome. And that's actually what we're doing here. So I'm going to say, hey, there's two numbers that multiply together to be 100. And I've got a list of numbers that multiply to be 100. Watch me list them real quick. 1 and 100, negative 1, and negative 100. 2 and 50, negative 2, and negative 50. Uh, 4 and 25, negative 4 and negative 25. 5 and 20, 
negative 5 and negative 20. Uh, 6 doesn't work, 7 doesn't work, 8 doesn't work, 9 doesn't work, 10 works though. 10 times 10 and negative 10 times negative 10. And if you'll notice, these numbers go up. 1, 2, 4, 5, 10. These numbers go down. 150, 25, 20, 10. And whenever they meet in the middle, I know that I've got all of my possible combinations here. Permutations, technically, since order sort of matters, but whatever. Uh, who wants to be so picky, right? So two numbers that multiply together to be 100, those are the only possibilities in the world. I just listed all of them. And now one of these sets will add up together to make 20. And you can bet it's right there, 10 and 10. So plus 10, plus 10. And that's how I know how to do that. But the beauty of completing the square is I don't have to do that because I know that since these numbers are the same, right? Because it's squared. I want it to be squared, so that number has to be the same for both. And I know that these numbers have to add up to be this number. Each one has to be half. So I'm actually taking a little bit of a shortcut there because it's squared. And this method works if they're not squared. But because it's squared, I can do a little shortcut and say I only need to do half of that. all makes sense. So we just did one. I want to take an opportunity for you to try one with my... Guidance, but not help. Is that good? So get out some sort of piece of paper. We can kill the video now. Thank you so much for making that happen. Thanks, Daniel. So no Daniel's